I'm generally does go down, so we are aware of, of the problems related to our past performance. This is another incredibly tragic and sad situation where more of our residents, more of our city members, neighbors have been killed. And it's not a coincidence that this has happened at the encampment. Uh, we have seen a significant increase in both homicides and shootings specifically around encampments. And notably, uh, there are areas of the city, even areas of the city that have traditionally have had higher crime rates where crime has dropped that don't have a camp. Uh, with the north side, for instance, we've seen crime drop over this last year. Uh, our officers are doing an amazing job, yet uh, what we see is shootings and crime happening within the immediate vicinity of an encampment. This is not about a lack of shelter. Uh, it's not even most of the time about a lack of housing. The issues that we're seeing in terms of crime uh, and violence it's about fentanyl. It is about a drug that takes a hold of your body and your mind like nothing that we've ever seen before. Uh, we need to be doubling down to make sure that uh, it is not easy to continuously set up and then move these homeless encampments. We also need to be working with a number of other jurisdictional partners with our county and our state. It should not matter whose property it is. It shouldn't matter whether it's the city's property, private property, MnDOT property, or county property. We should all be working together to make sure that people have a route to shelter and housing if they are willing to take it. But if not, homeless encampments are simply not the answer. You've heard me ad nauseum say this exact same thing, and yet again, we have more people that are dead. So we need to be honest and realistic about what is happening right now. We need to call a spade a spade. This is not about a lack of shelter. This is about fentanyl. We need to put an end to this because people are dying. It has a huge impact on these surrounding neighborhoods. Most of the time, by the way, are lower income neighborhoods. And so I appreciate the chief's work on this. I appreciate the work that both our, our police as well as our homeless response team have been doing uh, over the last several months. Uh, this is sad and tragic, uh, but we're gonna work our way through it. So uh, I'll open it up at this time to questions related to this murder. Uh, and then secondly, I want to give an update uh, to the situation we have on Grand Avenue. Yeah, we know what the problems are. Why can't we get ahead of it? What are the, the biggest challenges in kind of getting ahead of something like this and, and making it so we don't have to have any stuff like this? Yeah, so um, it, it's, it's a complex issue. Obviously, it depends on where the property is, whether it's on private property versus uh, city property or some other government uh, entity. Uh, and I can just tell you, uh, you know, one of the most frustrating things that the police officers are dealing with when they're coming here and responding to complaints uh, kind of around these things uh, is this situation where, you know, despite however many times we have cleared encampments and use a whole lot of resources around the city to do that, that we do have folks uh, and things, other encampments popping up elsewhere. So that was the case for sure yesterday. I'm not that familiar with the history of this one here, but at least the one yesterday, we had a large encampment on Franklin Avenue that was underneath uh, the underpass there. Uh, and that, encamp that small encampment that's been there the last couple of weeks was a result of clearing the encampment on Franklin Avenue. So that's both a frustration of our residents around these issues, um, but also a frustration from the police officers who, who have been trying to, right. to maintain these clear. Yeah, and I'll add a few more things. Just to put some statistics back up what I said previously. This is not about a lack of shelter and housing. We are presently producing eight and a half times the amount of deeply affordable housing that we did just a number of years ago. Eight and a half times. We have added new shelter beds and added to our shelter system. Uh, and at the same time, yes, we've seen homeless encampments expand in a few places throughout the city. And, and to be clear, the primary driving issue here is fentanyl. Uh, we've had council members and activists try to prevent these homeless encampments from being closed. That makes it all the harder to get the necessary resources in order to close them, and then all the harder the next time that the homeless encampment moves to try to prevent that one from getting set up as well. So we gotta be blunt, we gotta be honest about what is happening right now, and you know, we have taken the compassionate 
and caring approach. But we also here need to be compassionate and caring to these surrounding neighborhoods that have been plagued with violence because of this drug trade. It's an issue, it needs to be addressed. Well, at least from the law enforcement side, uh, we work with all of our federal, county, uh, and state partners. Um, you know, and there has been uh, significant seizures of fentanyl made both by Minneapolis police as well as all the law enforcement partners that are operating this area. Uh, to include a uh, significant arrest a couple months ago of folks who were bringing uh, fentanyl from the border states, I believe Arizona, up into Minnesota. Um, but the reality is, uh, you know, we don't have the ability to make all of the arrests possible to stop this from coming into this country. That's just the reality. A very, very small amount of fentanyl uh, is, is capable of even killing someone. Uh, and it's just, uh, it's incredibly cheap. Uh, it's incredibly lucrative for those who are smuggling it uh, into this country. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, that's that's part of what drives the issue is is just, you know, uh, an inability to stop the illegal flow of fentanyl from just coming into the country to begin with. It's impacting communities all over the state, all over the country. Um, but obviously, it, it tends to be more pronounced and visible on the street uh, in the way that you see in cities. If they're illegal set them up these encampments are you in a position where as soon as you see one go up you go in there and make arrests if it's illegal so you don't have a situation like this repeat or is that unrealistic the police uh do their best they can with smaller encampments uh when they are able uh to 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 clear them um but the reality is a lot of these uh a lot of these are more entrenched uh and again it goes back to being able to verify uh, you know, who the property owner is and, and, and so on. I mean, it is, it is a complicated issue. I don't know if you want to speak further. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean there's, there's both the law enforcement side, which is preventing these drugs from coming in to begin with, and also prosecuting the individuals that are dealing. Uh, and then there's also the health-based side, making sure that we've got prevention in place. There's education mm -hmm. out there to make sure that people are aware of what they're consuming, what they're taking in. Uh, there's health uh, and, and harm reduction efforts that are happening. And then finally, there's treatment and healing. And so, yes, we are pushing out all of that. Uh, and at the same time, again, this is a drug that is cheap. This is a drug that is plentiful, that is coming into the city uh, at rates that we have not seen before. And again, this is not like crack. This is like 100 times stronger than crack uh, and has a huge impact on someone's ability just to control themselves, uh, to make their own decisions. And so, you know, again, uh, I've, I've heard from uh, a number of people throughout the city, including council members, repeatedly, that we should not be shutting down these encampments. Uh, we should simply allow the encampment to exist continuously. That's not safe. That is neither safe for the people at the encampment, nor is it safe for the surrounding neighborhood. We need to be working together on a multi-jurisdictional basis, all of us, to make sure that we're providing, yes, housing, and yes, shelter, and that these encampments are cleared because it's not safe and it should not matter whose property it's on. It's got to be a collective effort. Chief, did you say that the three people who were detained were let go? Uh, they have not. Uh, I don't believe they've necessarily been released, uh, but we have ruled them out as suspects or in the murder. Yeah, Correct. Suspects, yes. Uh, no yes, we are working to identify the, the individuals. Um, yes. Between this and what happened yesterday? We have not yet ruled that out. So, yes, we are uh, definitely looking into that as a possibility for sure. And who owns this property? The city owned? Um, I, don't, I don't have that information. We can, we can get that for you. Right. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to figure that out between the railroad and the private property. We're trying to figure that out. And it's just, it's an example. I mean, there's places we go where we deal with these things and Part of it is transit, part of it is the county, part of it is DOT. It's just. Shouldn't matter is the answer. Part of the issue. Shouldn't yeah. matter. Yeah. It should all be a collective effort. Uh, I don't have that at this time. At least one. Yeah. It's really clear we have asked for this to be a collective effort among all. They were believed to have been residing at the encampment. I don't have that. I don't know that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And. 
regardless of whether the individuals are residing at the encampment, the encampment itself attracts a drug trade. The encampment itself is an open market for people that want to prey on others to go and make money. And so I've, I've heard some say, well, you know, was this directly related to the encampment because it wasn't necessarily a person that was staying there? That's besides the point. That's entirely missing the point. It is not a coincidence that these homicides are happening either right in or right next to a homeless encampment. To say otherwise is putting on blinders to the entire situation. Sorry, I might have missed this, but how is fentanyl uh, involved in the situation? Uh, fentanyl is very clearly uh, a factor around homeless encampments. Uh, if you talk to residents who live in and around these encampments, they oftentimes you know, are walking over needles and all of these things, drug paraphernalia that's used as a part of uh, you know, someone ingesting it. Uh, and it's just a, a unbelievably powerful and addictive and terribly you know, deadly drug. It's, it's so much different than you know, what, what we'd experienced in the past around you know, heroin and, and so on. It's so much worse. There, no other questions related to this. I'm, 